Greetings, divine angels of the new earth. Hope your day is most beautiful and blessed. We have a very special transmission for you today for this most auspicious conjunction of possibly the decade. I didn't have a lot of time prepare, to prepare for this, so I took some notes here. We have this powerful conjunction uh, today on the 20th. I'm recording this on the 19th as the sun transitions into Taurus. So we're in Taurian season. This is powerful earth energies, energy of the divine mother of the goddess. So we have one of the most powerful conjunctions, sacred alignments, celestial alignments in the heavens above, April 20th, 2024. This is Jupiter and Uranus in conjunction, in alignment with Taurus, you know, Taurus of our bull, the bull energy of the earth. This is lower Egypt, symbolic of lower Egypt, or the lower mind, the earth mind, the 3D human mind merging with higher Aries. You see, we had the eclipse in Aries, which was bringing in the catalyst for the fire energy, the Kundalini energy, divine masculine energy, and the earth, the divine feminine come together through this powerful conjunction. So it's very auspicious, possibly one of the most powerful conjunctions of this decade. You see, we have this, it hasn't happened in over 80 years, this alignment. You see, Jupiter is expansion. It expands everything that it comes into contact with. And Uranus is for breakthroughs. This is breakthrough energy. You know, we talk about our compression breakthrough. Some people call Uranus the great awakener. So I wanted to put out this special video. We have a lot of synchronicity symbolisms with this great uh, conjunction coming in and also this powerful full moon in Scorpio. You see, Scorpio is opposite of Taurus in the zodiac, the 12 signs of the zodiac. We have this full moon in, Tor in uh, Scorpio on Tuesday, April 23rd. So the sun will be in Taurus and the moon in Scorpio, these are polar opposites, but they come together th through this conjunction that's occurring tomorrow or today when you'll be watching this video, hopefully with all of us. So I wanted to uh, transmit some certain gnosis and then I'll head over to my computer and I'll transmit uh, some very uh, special transmissions from our New Earth scribes. We have beautiful weather here today. It's about 73 de degrees in the Pacific Northwest, perfect temperature of, of the new earth. This is the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold. The sun is blazing bright, not a cloud in the sky, neither natural nor man-made. So it's a very beautiful, auspicious day. You see Mama Bear, my queen's mother, who's a master astrologer, an expert in astrology, sent me a special message to lay low today on the 20th because uh, this this transit, this conjunction hits many parts of my chart, which is going to be some intense energies for most of our Tauruses out there. This is a very powerful uh, Earth energy. And you see, I found out uh, about a week ago, I talked to one of my sisters back in Cleveland, and I found out it's also my father, Ron. It's his birthday. You see, he passed uh, about 25 years ago, and I didn't spend much time with him. I didn't see him from about four years old till I was about 25. And then he passed of cancer several years later. So I only have a few memories of my father. He was a good man, you know, a good Christian man. But uh, his life was turned upside down when his five children, I was the youngest of five at four years old. You see, I have two brothers, two sisters that are still anchoring the light back in Cleveland. And one of my sisters, Catherine, Kathy, I call her KK, uh, one of our great angels in this realm. I spoke to her the other day and 
she let me know our father's birthday was on the 20th. See, I didn't know my father was also Taurus, Venusian energy. You see, I didn't see him. We were taken from him at four years old, and then I didn't see or hear from him, speak to him for about 20 years. I was about 24, 25 when he came back into our life through synchronicity, through alignments. It's a long story, which I'm not going to cover today, but I felt it was very synchronic. You know, he died in about 25 years ago from duodenum cancer. I know. I asked myself the same thing when I heard that duodenum, what is that? It is actually the organ that connects the stomach into the small intestines, the duodenum, uh, jejunum, connects to the jejunum into the small intestine. I know it sounds like I'm talking gibberish, but <laughs> it is the duodenum is very important. This is some of the fur after the stomach, the, you know, their food digests and it passes through the duodenum and the jejunum of the uh of the small intestines, you know, and it's a very rare cancer. You know, I did spend a couple days with him. One of, uh, I only have a few memories of my father, Ron, you know, uh, and one of them when he was dying of cancer, uh, he went from, he was a very strong man, very kind person. And he, you know, one of these all American people, you know, until his life was turned upside down when his children was taken from him through a nefarious act through the Vatican and certain uh, t this organization that was part of the Catholic Church called the TFP sent a dark en entity in to try to destroy me and my family. They failed, but my family, my brothers and sisters and I and my mother went through seven years of hell, you know, <laughs> to uh, for part of our mission to balance out these energies. That's another long story, but the duodena, you know, it's very rare cancer, but my father, um, one of the last days he was on the planet, he was six foot two, 220 pounds in his prime and his health, he went down to about 150 pounds. You see, he was very strict Catholic. He wouldn't take chemo or any of those things, but one of my last memories. I only have a few memories of him, but uh, I didn't get to spend much time with him. But I took him to the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo and pushed him around a wheelchair. He's only about 160 pounds at 6'2". I was a few months before he passed, but I was able to spend a beautiful day and took him around the, the zoo to see the animals. And I took him in there is a Costa Rican cloud forest and I, he had never been there. And uh, it was one of the spots where I, one of the stories I told about the orangutan that came up to me and we touched hands, but it was at this, this uh, very beautiful spot in the Cleveland me Metro parks. So his, his birthday, he's working with us in the higher realms and he suffered greatly, you know, at the hands of these nefarious beings that you know, we all know about. Uh, and this was through the Vatican. So, we also see, I want to cover a few things. I took a few notes so I don't forget to cover some of the most important aspects and then we'll head over to my computer. But we saw a couple of days ago and uh, transmitted from Erini, uh, this Olympic flame. You see, it's very symbolic. You know, the opening ceremony uh, in one part, there were 13 goddesses and they were in these dresses that looked like pillars that looked like columns. So this is the anchoring of the pillar of the divine goddess, divine feminine. And there were 13 goddesses. I saw a little clip of the ceremony in Olympia, uh, where the uh, original Olympic Games hundreds of years ago in Greece. And you see, it was a French man that brought back the Olympics. So this year, it's very symbolic that uh, the Olympics will be in France. Now, aside from all the nefarious things and all the negative symbolism, this is signs and codes. See, we have the 13 pillars and the 13 tribes returning of New Jerusalem. You see, we have the 12 <coughs> original tr tribes and then the new rainbow tribe making 13. You see, we have the 12 strand crystalline uh, DNA and the one in the middle making 13 strands. See, the 13 of divine feminine, the goddess. This is the mother energy's divine mother. So, this flame that was lit in Olympia in Greece, 
you know, our angels in Greece are anchoring in the codes and this flame will be traveling around the world and end up in France. So this is very symbolic of that this, this flame, you know, this is the threefold flame, also the flame of Saint Germain, you know, starting in France, traveling around the world, and I mean, starting in Greece, traveling around the world, and ending up in France. You see, we have many angels in France, too. We have many angels in every nation, but this is symbolic because we all know that the Magdalene, the divine goddess, the Magdalena flame is anchored in France. And you see, she left the Middle East and went into into France. We we believe this is some of the stories. Uh, if you follow some of these uh, Merovingian uh, symbolism, so that we have the Cathars. The Cathars are part of the Essene tradition. You know, Essenes that went into Europe. See, the Cathars were persecuted by the Catholic Church many moons ago because the Cathars believed that Yeshua we call Jesus Christos, the Cathars of France and Europe, and they spread out from Europe. Uh, some went into the Middle East and that, and up into the North, and some into Siberia, some into India and that. So to escape persecution and the, the knowledge of the Cathars uh, spread throughout uh, the Caucasus, the Caucasus, which was, um, you know, where Caucasian came through the Caucasus, which was uh, Europe, you know, part of Europe up into, say, like Norway, um, down into parts of the Middle East. You see, there are main three regions at this time. Hundreds of years ago, we had Mongolia, we had the Caucasus, and then we had the Congo, which is now Africa. And that was of the known world. You know, obviously we had the West, which was North and South, North, Central and South America, the Americas, we call it now. But this was before um, the Americas were even known to to the East, that as far as we know, as far as history tells us. So the Cathars believed that Yeshua was not a human incarnate, that Yeshua was an angel that came to earth, Jesus Christos, who people now call Jesus, if you want to know, learn more about that story, check out uh, the, the Gnosis of Jesus Christos, the, the teaching I put out a couple of weeks ago, which is just a very small tip of the iceberg. You know, I'd, I'd have to do a documentary at least 10 hours long just to scratch the surface. So we're doing the best we can. So they believe, the Cathars believe that Yeshua was not an incarnate, that he wasn't crucified, all these stories all these myths, but they believed and they passed these teaching on that Yeshua was an angel that came to earth, that he was a higher dimensional being you might call extraterrestrial. You know, some people say, you know, the symbolic, the higher dimensional beings that are extra dimensional, intra dimensional, all these words that point to higher dimensional beings that are not of this 3D realm, you see. So they believe that, um, you know, Yeshua came to earth etherically, you know, not in a physical 3D vessel, but as an angelic being to teach humanity of the way of the kingdom of heaven within, the way of true knowledge, true gnosis. And this threatened the church. So they sent out, you know, through these crusades and stuff like that to either convert or kill uh, all the, the people that, you know, were teaching. And this was, you know, the Essenes, the Cathars, many other traditions that came out of uh, the Middle East area, you know, into Europe and that. So this was a, a great persecution. And so now this knowledge is returning to our people in these final days of the false 3D matrix, you know. So one thing quick I'd want to cover is um, before we I jump onto my computer and transmit uh, some from the New Earth Scribes, I want to get this out by tomorrow. So I'm going to make this quick. You know, I want to talk real quick, real, real briefly.
you know, about my mother's side. See, my, my parents, Ron and Mary Jo, you know, they came together many moons ago, but they were too immature to hold up the family line. So this is what we are doing. Our, our twin flame energies, our divine unions are saying everything is about family. You know, we keep our families together. We communicate, we understand each other. See, they were too immature in consciousness to, to talk, to, to understand each other, to communicate. See, healthy relationships are all about healthy communication, speaking from your heart understanding and caring about your family about your children you see this is the way of the new earth it's all about family you know soul family our our soul tribes our communities you know but it starts in the home it starts in your heart you see so my parents you know came from both uh wealthy families my father's side which i can't even remember his parents names you know, because they abandoned us, they betrayed us. You see, me and my people will never betray our people, will never give up on our people, will never give up on our mission. You know, as long as I have breath in this body, we will continue with our mission, you know, until we're fully on new earth. And then my queen and I may return to our 12D Venus. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but for now, we, we keep holding the codes of divine union, of abundance, of peace, of prosperity. You see, my queen and I, we come from a long lineage of warriors. You see, my father, um, he was a good man. He was in barbershop quartet. He was, you know, the... Um, a uh, very successful entrepreneur. You see, he came from great wealth. His parents were very wealthy. They, uh, his father owned one of the biggest uh, electrical construction companies in Cleveland and sold it for millions of dollars back in the 60s. And he was preparing, he was Catholic, preparing his family uh, for the Armageddon. You know, he believed in the apocalyptic vision. So he bought a bunch of land out, I believe in Wisconsin and bought, built homes in a community for his family to survive. But, you know, he believed was Armageddon, which we know is just a shift. It's a process. It's a transition. And you see, they, uh, when we were taken from my father, I never heard from his family and until we reunited with him. And then once he passed, I lost total communication with them. So we were written out of the wills and all those things. See, we went from wealth to being homeless at one point when I was four and, uh, you know, living in the ghetto. And then we kind of moved west. And then my mother's father, our grandfather, who was with us until he passed when I was about 11 years old. And my grandmother was one of the kindest, most beautiful matriarchs in this realm. She was good friends with Mamie Eisenhower. They would have tea and crumpets play bridge on Sundays. They were neighbors during World War II. You see, my grandfather uh, was a very powerful warrior. You know, he was uh, the right one of the right hand men of General Patton and General Eisenhower. You see, that's how my grandmother knew Mamie Eisenhower because my grandfather was one of his Eisenhower who was general during World War II. Then he became president after World War II. We have a crow that just flew up. Hello, angel. To join us in this talk, in this ceremony. You see, my grandfather, uh, my grandparents on my mother's side, Fry, you see, my mother had two sisters. There were three daughters. They both have passed. My mother's still kicking it back in Cleveland. She's 78 years young. She still works a full time job for, uh, you know, one of Warren Buffett's company, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, but at least she can work from home now. After the scamdemic, that was one of the good things that came out of it. You know, a lot of people couldn't work from home, so she doesn't have to deal with traffic driving downtown and all that nonsense in Cleveland. You see, her her parents, uh, Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph Fry. You see, my father, my grandfather, Joseph Fry. His mother was Anna Mae Davis, not the Anna Mae Davis, but the one related. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, the uh, my grandfather was uh, major, major. He was at Normandy, you know, all his troops. His troops would build the bridges for Patton's troops and his tanks and all that. You see, my grandfather was 
in the Army Corps of Engineers. You know, he became Lieutenant Colonel after World War II, but he was major, uh, a major during World War II. And, you know, Patton was, you know, he was one of Patton's right-hand men. You know, he worked directly with Patton, worked directly with General Eisenhower and Winston Churchill. You see my queen, she's related to Patton. That's a story for another day. But this is this is not how we met. This is just a synchronicity, a powerful synchronicity, because Patton and my grandfather were very close, very good friends and worked many years together. And my grandfather fell in love with the French, you know, when during World War II. So he was at Normandy when that invasion of Normandy, which shifted the tides of the war, as you all know, from history, see my father, my grandfather, uh, stuck around after World War II to help rebuild France. You know, he spent I think about five years after World War II to help the, the French rebuild after all the devastation of the Nazis when they occupied uh, the country of France during World War II. So we have a deep connection. You know, our our gold dragon of our lineage. You see, I worked many years with the gold dragon nation of the Kunlun lineage and of the Mao Shan, you see. So I am of the white dragon nation, which means I can transform into any color dragon at will, but it takes great cheese. So I, I just stay you know, <laughs> in this uh, white gold eagle body for now, unless if I need to transform into dragon, then I'll use all my chi to do that. You see, so my grandfather helped rebuild France and we have this, this Olympic energy, this Olympia, this warrior energy, you know, transitioning into France. You see the gold dragon of our lineage, uh, Ching Fong Dao Shi, who now goes by Mu Jin Roshi. He lives with uh, his divine counterpart, a gold dragon female, Diana, in outside of Sedona in the forest there. But he taught in France for many years. He taught in Japan in uh, Russia, in France, in Israel. So we have many of our lineage in Israel, in, in Russia, in uh, the Middle East, in uh, Japan, in France, and all over the world, Canada. So I've taught uh, many of our people all over the world over the years, but now I just teach through Patreon and, and the YouTube memberships and that, our, our lineages and uh, different things, different qigongs, neigongs, and many other healing arts. So you can join us there at whitegoldeagle.com. So I'm going to end this here. Just uh, put your awareness into this major conjunction, and we're going to head over to the computer, and I'll transmit some gnosis, some information, some knowledge from our New Earth scribes. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a most beautiful, blessed day as we continue our journey through the Ascension portal and into our new heaven upon the new earth. Namaste. And now we're going to continue with a special transmission from my Sacred Condor's weekly astrology report from whitegoldeagle.com. Jupiter and Uranus conjunction is an exciting celestial event that occurs when these two planets align in the same part of the sky under the same zodiac sign. Let's explore the details. April 20th, 2024. Both planets, Jupiter and Uranus, are currently in Taurus. This conjunction can bring about significant disruptions, changes, or maneuvers on both a macro and micro scale. Historical correlations. In the past, this conjunction has been associated with powerful events and shifts. Jupiter has been in Taurus since May 16th, 2023. During the past year, Jupiter's expansive energy has been shaking things up globally and in our personal lives. Uranus is the change maker, also in Taurus. This conjunction highlights trailblazing ideas and revolutionary thinking. It's a time when what seemed too out there might suddenly become relevant and timely. Earthquakes and more. The power of this conjunction has already made itself known with recent earthquakes. On a personal level, it's a moment for a 14-year trailblazer checkup. 
from now until the summer solstice on june twentieth we could witness more rumblings international shifts or even unexpected encounters remember astrology offers insights but it's essential to approach it with curiosity and an open mind whenever you're fascinated by the cosmic dance or simply curious this conjunction is one of the biggest astrological events of twenty twenty four the conjunction of jupiter and uranus occurs when these two planets appear close to each other in the sky from the perspective of earth in astrology the conjunction of jupiter and uranus is often considered a significant celestial event with potential astrological implications jupiter is associated with expansion growth abundance and optimism it represents higher knowledge wisdom and opportunities for personal and spiritual growth uranus on the other hand is associated with innovation change revolution and unpredictability it represents individuality freedom and sudden breakthroughs or disruptions when jupiter and uranus conjoin their energies combine potentially amplifying each other's influence this conjunction may signify a period of sudden or unexpected changes breakthroughs and opportunities for growth and expansion it can bring about a sense of liberation innovation and new perspectives the jupiter uranus conjunction holds profound astrological significance let's delve into its meanings expansive transformation jupiter the planet of expansion meets uranus the planet of innovation and change this conjunction symbolizes radical shifts both personally and globally it encourages us to break free from limitations and embrace new possibilities breakthroughs and breakdowns expect breakthroughs in areas where you have felt stuck simultaneously be prepared for breakdowns of old structures that no longer serve your growth it's a cosmic invitation to evolve and adapt collective awakening on a global scale this conjunction catalyzes collective awakening societal norms technology and political paradigms may undergo sudden changes innovations and discoveries could reshape our world for individuals it's a time to liberate yourself from self-imposed limitations dare to explore uncharted territories whether at career relationships or personal growth trust your intuition and take bold steps rebellion and revolution uranus brings an element of rebellion question the status quo challenge authority and seek unconventional solutions be open to unexpected opportunities awakening consciousness jupiter expands our consciousness use this energy to explore spiritual pursuits higher knowledge and philosophical insights seek wisdom beyond the mundane innovation and discovery scientific breakthroughs technological advancements and space exploration may accelerate be curious and receptive to new ideas remember astrology provides a lens through which we can understand cosmic energies while the conjunction itself doesn't dictate events it influences our collective and individual experiences embrace the cosmic dance and navigate this transformative period with awareness from whitegoldeagle.com and from divine energy works jupiter uranus conjunction in taurus the biggest transit of 2024 while this transit happens approximately once in every 14 years it is extremely rare for these celestial bodies to meet in taurus last time it happened in 1941 and won't happen again until 2107 making it a once in a lifetime event on the heels of the rare total eclipse of the sun the fireworks of the biggest multi-dimensional energetic event of 2024 will be happening on april 20th the activation of the divine masculine hero and initiation of a new energetic cycle which will unfold in the next 14 years and is being anchored by the taurus energy into our physical body and 3d reality jupiter is a galactic activator and when it comes together in the electrifying conjunction with the revolutionary uranus it will magnify all that the great awakener uranus rules energetically 
truth, freedom, authenticity, divine insights, breakthroughs, shock, revolution, and unexpected events, further activating the age of Aquarius. This is the ground-shaking new earth energy of abundance, quantum leaps, sudden, unexpected events, and exciting opportunities, financial breakthroughs, divine partnerships, technological advancements, bringing forth the beginning of the new energetic cycle of profound growth and breakthroughs into the higher state of consciousness, an embodiment of the highest timeline into physical reality. And from Divine Sistar of the Light Deviani sing Isis Channelings, Act 2, Jupiter-Uranus Conjunction, Young King of the Emerald Sun and the Urius Dragon Mothers, we are currently swimming in the liminal space of the uncertain, unknown, and undecided of what was and what will be between Act 1, Solar Eclipse, April 8th, and Act 2, Jupiter-Uranus Conjunction. For Act 1, the dragon cosmic mother energy finally releases the cosmic egg of new creations by bringing alchemical balance of the four elements, double infinity to birth spirit into manifestation via the high heart. As a prelude to Act 2, an impromptu channeling session with a young divine masculine brought in some interesting information. During our session, the client was activated by the emerald light of Atlantis, heart plus third eye, by Tholth, high priest of Atlantis and the second pillar of light, solar plexus, and Uraeus, was held by lion queen Sekhmet, the Venus metagoddess aspect of the current Venus cycle, the dragon mother energy that birthed midwife, the new light now transforms as a Uraeus, that is, the protector, mentor to the new light equals young king. I had talked about the eclipse activating the Uraeus in the past post for the eclipse. Now remember, new light equals young king equals Horus equals Jupiter, according to shamanic astrology. And Uraeus, the serpent, kundalini energy equals Wajet equals Uranus. To shamanic astrology, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction takes place on the 20th of April in a 14-year cycle. The knowings that came forth from the session was that the previous Jupiter-Uranus conjunction of 2011 set the wheels in motion for the Divine Feminine Awakening that gained momentum 2012, December 12th, 21st onwards. This current Jupiter-Uranus conjunction now propels the Divine Masculine into the role of the Young King, mentored, guided, and protected by the Dragon Serpent Energy Uraeus of the Divine Feminine. Sekhmet is closely associated with the Uraeus Wadjet energy. The Emerald Sun Light Flame is to be made manifest by the Young King under the guidance of the Uraeus, Divine Feminine. The Emerald Sun Light is the power of the visualizing and manifesting a higher consciousness way of life that balances High Heart, Eclipse Birthing Portal, and the Higher Mind, Jupiter-Uranus Conjunction, Uranus as a higher octave of Mercury, the Mind. Mercury current retrograde in Aries, Divine Masculine, in a tango with Chiron, the Wounded Healer, is revisiting our past, ancient, karmic wounds, particularly on the relationship axis, so that we may finally heal and find closure and clarity by the time Mercury goes direct on April 25th. Interestingly, on the solar eclipse, I was shown that for the birthing of the cosmic egg, the dragon mothers were etherically joined by their divine counterparts as balance was key. The condor and the eagle worked as a unit. The conjunction takes place in the earthy grounded sign of Taurus, ruled by Venus, currently at Earth Star Chakra, 7th of April onwards, grounding our energies into the flower of life electromagnetic frequency of Gaia. Furthermore, the liminal birthing passage between the eclipse and the conjunction that we are currently in is curated by the Navratris, the nine nights of the goddess Durga, Sekhmet, April 9th through 17th, the kundalini life force energy of the goddess that began at the root chakra and culminates as the Uraeus. 
How is that for divine orchestration? At the 3D level, Aries' warrior energy is at play on the world stage, as was expected. How the etheric codes of the young king, divine masculine, bringer of the new light, reset the wounded ego-driven 3D aspect of the divine masculine over the next 14 years? Time will tell. Sabian symbol of this conjunction is white dove over troubled waters. The wisdom keepers, dragon mothers, oracle, and protectors of the young kings have the power and potential to navigate the collective through these troubled waters. When you know, you know, believe, and light and grace and joy be the change you want to see. Sake na from isischannelings.wordpress.com and from the Blue Rose School of Astrology, Ireland, Jupiter conjunct Uranus, 20th, 21st of April, 2024, beyond conformity. With all the eclipse excitement, not many people have this conjunction on their radar, but I have been excited about it for months. In the early morning of April 21st, evening of April 20th for the U.S., these two archetypes come together at 21 degrees Taurus and blend their energies. I'll give you a few combinations so you have an idea of what a blending of them could mean. Surprising discoveries, great awakenings, big shocks, massive breakthroughs, rapid developments, large revolutions, expansions in technology, lots of innovations, too much detachment. Just from these descriptions, you can probably feel the excitement and the speed and anticipate the mind-blowing possibilities that lie ahead of us. And I am optimistic we will choose the higher expressions of this pair. The fusion of Jupiter and Uranus also exaggerates the need for authenticity, the need for freedom, and the need to go beyond the norms. It encourages us to live on the fringes of society and march to our very own drum. It will assist us in reforming the old and growing out of that metaphorical pair of shoes that has become too small for us. Jupiter meets Uranus every 14 years, therefore the collective is now embarking on another 14-year long journey, learning to delicately balance authenticity and growth and exploring how to be unique in societal construct, with breakthroughs and developments we cannot even imagine yet. Bringing in the Taurian fixed earth aspect, we can collectively learn how to create more material security and authentic financial growth. We can learn how to maintain and protect our bodies and health by becoming more food independent and opening our minds to new healing concepts and how to live with and in nature, knowing the blessings and abundance it holds for us and understanding it is the key to our true authentic nature. Keeping the above in mind, only a certain level of non-conforming and reforming can lead us to innovation and expansion. We need to break out of the old form that we know to quantum leap into something bigger. And from Divine Sistar of the Light, Pam Gregory, we are already in the energy of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that is exact on the 20th, 21st of April, following three days later by the full moon in Scorpio. Please note that this conjunction is not just for one day, but marks the beginning of a new episode for humanity with many events cascading from it over the coming months. It is an aspect of awakening, a potential jump in consciousness, of a greater demand for freedom, a greater expression of individuality, and many innovations and new technologies will come from this wave. It may bring about greater revolution in the world to expedite the collapse of the old order, and it brings with it a feeling of speed and lightness, excitement for the next adventure. Since the energetic shift of the solar eclipse, when many people felt lighter, clearer, and more focused on their purpose, having shed much of the intensity and anxiety of the past during the eclipse, this steps us up onto a different timeline. Grasp that opportunity fully. Do not look back to your old problems. Live in the moment and in your passion, and especially live from the heart and from love from now on. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is one of the most important aspects of the year. 
strengthened as pluto is now in aquarius ruled by uranus so we have not had this conjunction while pluto has been in aquarius and pluto last left this sign in seventeen ninety eight plan to make a quantum jump in your life with this keep welcoming in this new light that is available to us now and know that everything we are creating comes from the invisible as this is foundational anything not made of love will crumble and this crumbling will accelerate this year as more truths come to light also keep welcoming in an expanded consciousness of love through your days many of us felt a profound healing as we moved through the solar eclipse we moved from intensity anxiety challenge to shedding so much of our old patterning and are emerging as clearer lighter happier and more purposeful there is a sense of the heavy energy falling away and we are bobbing up in the waters of life into a higher timeline we are already into the energy of jupiter uranus conjunction that happens only once in this cycle on the twentieth twenty first of april again this is not just for one day but is the start point for many rapid and radical changes in our world this is arguably one of the most important aspects of this year yes the total solar eclipse was important partly due to the eclipse path falling across the usa and reinforcing previous eclipse paths there and the pluto returned for the u.s which is still operational and has another year or so to run however total solar eclipses happen around every two to three years sometimes they fall across an ocean and therefore are less impactful on a specific country where an eclipse path falls we tend to see big changes and a lot of news but the u s is definitely taking center stage right now however the jupiter uranus conjunction happens every thirteen to fourteen years and last happened in taurus in nineteen forty one this time around this conjunction is greatly reinforced by the fact that uranus rules the sign of aquarius and pluto has just entered aquarius and will be there for the next twenty years it has not been in aquarius since seventeen ninety eight so that heightens the radical revolutionary effect on the jupiter uranus conjunction so see where twenty one degrees forty nine minutes taurus falls in your chart as this is likely over the coming months to be an area of life where you see sudden and possibly surprising change usually this is related to shaking off stale routine patterns that no longer serve your growth and sometimes making you suddenly and starkly aware of those patterns to make a change it is revolutionary seismic explosive energy of truth awakening excitement adventure new discoveries technological innovations of all kinds and a greater sense of your unique essence contributing to the world your authenticity and truth coming to the fore it is like a jump in our consciousness too and i think we will start to understand a lot more about the importance of light in how we create our reality this light is not necessarily visible and remember that everything that is foundational is creating our reality is invisible we create from the feelings much more than from thinking of love joy compassion gratitude appreciation and peace you cannot measure any of those emotions in units and yet these are the feelings that create energetic coherence in our toroidal field and magnetize a more beautiful reality towards us with pluto and aquarius in the jupiter uranus conjunction this month we are on the precipice of a new episode for humanity moving us towards becoming homo luminous through our understanding of the invisible humanity has never made such a leap before whilst remaining in our physicality we are welcoming in an expanded consciousness of love and this upcoming conjunction is going to help us take another giant leap in that revolution of love blessings to you all and from here in the moon astrology a heads up leverage your luck now to ride the jupiter uranus wave of prosperity all the way to april twenty second circle april eighteenth through the twenty sixth twenty twenty four in your diary as a time for a personal breakthrough when you can make or save a lot of money and expand your resources on those dates the rare and auspicious jupiter uranus conjunction at twenty one twenty two degrees taurus will be exact but it's already in play now if you sit back and wait for shiny things just to drop in your lap then it will be too late the wave will have passed 
knowing in advance that this is the first Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and financial sign Taurus since the early 1940s. Set your intentions for a big leap now. Jupiter is lucky and Uranus surprises. Taurus rules love, money, values, and your self-esteem. This unpredictable energy could be a ride on the wheel of fortune, breaking you out of scarcity consciousness. If you have planets or angles between 18 to 24 degrees Taurus, this is going to be an exciting, electric, buzzing time. But it's bigger than that. Everyone can benefit. The future feels upbeat. Whatever happens will be very fast and unpredictable. People stuck in bad situations could suddenly discover a way out. Given that this is happening in a seismic field of a supermoon total solar eclipse, in sign of individuation, Aries on April 8th, to make a big leap, your definition of success and good fortune needs to evolve. The key is thinking for yourself, trusting your own instincts, and thinking outside the box. At every choice point, choose new over old, then boldly act on it. That's your Jupiter-Uranus formula for a true breakthrough. Risk-taking will pay off if you really believe in what you're into, personally or financially, but don't gamble the farm. Expect a real test of talents because everybody's rising on the same tide. Your unique skill set, service is your leverage. Start new projects, launch a new platform, add an income stream by breaking new ground in areas that are radically different. Seize unexpected opportunities immediately as they present. Make financial independence your priority. What are you going to do differently starting now? Take concrete steps to becoming self-supporting and self-sustaining. This transit has the potential to be one of those turning points where you plant seeds that will bear fruit well down the timeline into the future. Remember, this is Taurus. Improvements will take time and probably a bit of investment before you see the results. Look back at the last two dates this once every 14 years opportunity occurred to see how it played out for you, February 1997 in early Aquarius and May 2010 in late Pisces. The big difference is that this time you know it's happening and you can raise your sails and rise with the tide. Luck increases when you run on the fuel of curiosity and generosity. The truth is that you do not need more powers but to use those already available to you in your magic backpack. Qualities you have always had but may not have known until now. From here in the moon astrology.co.uk And now we're going to complete this very special transmission with a very special healing ceremony and guided meditation from my sacred condor. Have a most beautiful and blessed Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Namaste. And now, for the healing ceremony and guided meditation for the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Welcome to the sacred healing ceremony and guided meditation, designed to harness the transformative energies of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. During this celestial alignment, we have the opportunity to embrace change, innovation, and abundance in our lives. Let us come together to tap into the powerful healing energies of this cosmic event. Find a quiet and comfortable space where you can sit or lie down undisturbed. Light a candle or some incense to create a sacred atmosphere. Take a few deep breaths, allowing your body to relax and your mind to become centered. We begin by calling upon the four elements earth, air, fire, and water, to bless and protect this sacred space. Visualize each element surrounding you, offering its unique qualities of stability, clarity, passion, and emotional healing. Take a moment to set your intentions for this healing ceremony. What areas of your life would you like to bring transformation and abundance to? Allow your intentions to be guided by your heart's deepest desires. Now close your eyes 
and visualize yourself surrounded by the lush greenery of a tranquil garden. Feel the earth beneath you, grounding and supporting you. Tune in to the nurturing energies of Taurus, represented by the fertile soil, blooming flowers, and sturdy trees. As you bask in the beauty of the garden, call upon the expansive energy of Jupiter and the innovative energy of Uranus to join you. Visualize their vibrant light descending from the heavens and enveloping you in a cocoon of cosmic energy. With the presence of Jupiter and Uranus, open yourself up to the possibility of change and transformation. Release any resistance or fear you may have towards change, and instead, embrace it as an opportunity for growth and expansion. Visualize streams of golden light flowing down from Jupiter, carrying with them the energy of abundance and prosperity. Allow this divine energy to fill you with a sense of abundance in all areas of your life. Financial abundance, abundance of love, abundance of opportunities, and abundance of joy. Now tune in to the electric energy of Uranus, sparking innovation and creativity within you. Feel yourself becoming a conduit for new ideas, insights, and breakthroughs. Allow yourself to think outside the box and envision new possibilities for the future. Offer gratitude to Jupiter, Uranus, and the elements for their presence and blessings during this healing ceremony. Express thanks for the abundance, transformation, and healing that you have received. Take a few moments to reflect on the insights and experiences you've gained during this meditation. Notice how you feel in your body, mind, and spirit. Know that the healing energies of the ceremony will continue to work within you, guiding you on your path of growth and evolution. When you're ready, gently bring your awareness back to your physical surroundings. Wiggle your toes and your fingers, slowly reawakening your senses. Take a few deep breaths, feeling yourself rooted and grounded in the present moment. May the transformative energies of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction continue to inspire growth, abundance, and innovation in your life. May you walk your path with courage confidence, and an open heart, so shall it be. As you conclude this healing ceremony and guided meditation, carry the energies of abundance, transformation, and innovation with you into the days ahead. Trust in the power of the universe to support you on your journey of healing and growth. Blessed be. Thank you so much for joining us for our weekly New Earth Report and Astrology Reading, and we hope you have a most beautiful and blessed week ahead. We love you all. Namaste.